When you pluck the A string on a guitar, it vibrates back and forth 110 times per second, or at 110 hertz. The vibration is then passed on to the hollow body of the guitar, which vibrates at the same rate as the string and amplifies the sound. But when you pluck the string, it doesn't just vibrate back and forth at that one frequency. Actually, it vibrates at many different frequencies all at the same time, the lowest of which is 110 hertz, and this is called the fundamental frequency. To get a string to vibrate only at its fundamental frequency, you would need to start it off in a perfectly curved shape. In practice, this is impossible, and you generally pluck a string by creating a kink in it, either with a pick or your finger. When you let go, the various parts of the string are pulled back towards their equilibrium, they overshoot and then start vibrating in lots of different ways simultaneously. But because the string is fixed at both ends, it can only vibrate in multiples of the fundamental frequency. So the whole length of the string vibrates at the fundamental frequency of 110 hertz, and this is called the first harmonic. The string also vibrates in halves at 220 hertz, and this is the second harmonic or the first overtone. The string also vibrates in thirds at 330 hertz, which is the third harmonic or the second overtone, and it vibrates in quarters at 440 hertz, which is the fourth harmonic or third overtone, and so on. And in theory, this process goes on indefinitely, so you have an infinite amount of harmonics. And this is called the overtone series, or the harmonic series, and it's the basis of how we structure music, as we'll discover over the next few videos. So all the overtones are just multiples of the fundamental frequency. And there's a direct relationship between the length of a string and the frequency at which it vibrates. If you halve the length of the string, you double its frequency. And you can play these harmonics on guitar by just lightly touching the string at the relevant node. So this is what the first three harmonics vibrating individually looks like. This is kind of what happens when you play a harmonic on a guitar by touching a node. And this is how a string vibrates when you start combining harmonics. As you can see, the way a string vibrates in reality is actually pretty complex, as you start adding more and more overtones. But even though there are many frequencies playing at once, the overall pattern that we hear repeats 110 times every second. This is because in the time that the fundamental frequency completes one full cycle, the first overtone completes two full cycles, the second overtone completes three full cycles, and so on. So the entire pattern repeats at 110 hertz, or at the fundamental frequency, and all the overtones just make the wave shape more complex. So we could start with a tone at 110 hertz. Then add one at 220 hertz. Then add one at 330 hertz. And then add another one at 440 hertz. And as you can hear, the pitch remains the same, even as we add new frequencies. It's only the timbre that changes. And notice how the sine waves of all these tones line up. So the fundamental frequency determines the pitch of the note, and all the overtones just support and complement the fundamental frequency to create a more complex and richer sound. Now, we don't hear the overtones as separate notes, but we do hear them. They are what give each instrument its unique sound. 
and instrument's overtones determine its timbre. The reason a violin sounds different to a guitar, which sounds different to a piano, which sounds different to a saxophone, even when they're all playing the same note, is because they produce notes which contain different mixes of these harmonics. For example, playing a note on a violin sounds the fundamental frequency backed up by the 2nd, 4th and 8th harmonics. Whereas playing a note on a flute sounds mostly the second harmonic, backed up by the fundamental and third harmonic. If we listen to just the fundamental frequency with no overtones, it's actually just a pure sine wave, and it sounds very boring and very simple. Changing the shape of the sound wave while keeping the same frequency will change how the note sounds, that is, the timbre of the note, but will not change the pitch of the note. Now, this can be done digitally, but it's also done naturally by instruments. If we add some harmonics, then we can begin to somewhat recreate a true instrument's sound. For example, the sound of a violin. Now, this is also why two violins sound different. The strings on all violins are all pretty much standard. But as we learned in the previous lesson, the wooden body of a stringed instrument amplifies the vibration of the string. And no two pieces of wood are the same. Wood can come from different trees, have different densities, be different ages, have different tree ring patterns, or be carved to different thicknesses. And all these factors may cause a particular piece of wood to be more responsive to certain harmonics over others. So one violin may favour certain harmonics, while another violin may emphasise different harmonics, and therefore their sound will be different. This is also why notes sound different when playing in different registers of the same instrument. The relative strength of harmonics change from note to note, so high notes may sound different to low notes, even on the same instrument. This also explains why the same guitar string sounds different if you pick it in different places. The fundamental frequency always stays the same, but plucking the string in different places will create different proportions of overtones. The second and fourth harmonics have a node, that is, a point that doesn't move, right in the middle of the string. So if you pluck the string right in the middle, you'll hear the fundamental frequency and the third harmonic, but you will not hear the second or fourth harmonic, precisely because the middle of the string is moving, and therefore cannot be a node. And if you pluck a string a third of the way down, you hear the fundamental, second, and fourth harmonic, but not the third, for the same reason. And this is also the reason why new strings sound different to old strings. A used, worn, and damaged string no longer vibrates perfectly symmetrically. It thus becomes quieter, and the notes can even become a little bit vague. It begins making more of a noise rather than a note, because it's no longer creating regular repeating wave patterns, and its overtones are a little bit distorted. Further, the wave pattern of a note changes as it is sustained. Sound waves tend to flatten out a bit over time. So a note at the start of its life will sound different to a note at the end of its life. This, again, is because different harmonics die off at different rates. You may start with a note that includes the 6th harmonic, but that harmonic may stop after a few seconds, even though other harmonics and therefore the note as a whole continues. The same thing happens in a tube of air, like a saxophone or a flute, but instead of a string vibrating, which in turn makes the air vibrate, brass and woodwind instruments make the air vibrate immediately. Now, in reality, there may be overtones which are not whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency. This is called inharmonicity. 
This especially afflicts short, thick, and loose strings, and causes some dissonance even when playing just a single note. But we'll cover this in more detail in a future video. So that, in a nutshell, is the Overtone series. And as we have just seen, it's important because it determines what an instrument actually sounds like. The Overtone series is incredibly important to music, and is really the basis of how all of music is structured. For example, the Overtone series determines whether two notes played together will sound pleasant or unpleasant, which is the subject of the next video.